Hello guys and welcome to part 3 of my DIY milling machine project. In the last two parts I built a spindle and a column. This part will be focused on the belt drive and the rolling cart. Let's get started then. As I mentioned in previous videos I used a 3D printer to make the comb pulleys. As material I used standard PLA. Until now the pulleys had no failure. I'm very curious how they are holding up over time. Let's talk a bit about the motor because it played a major part when it came to designing the pulleys. I salvaged this motor from an old water pump. According to the datasheet, it's a one phase 230 volt motor with about 450 watts. Not the strongest one, but if I need more horsepower, I can always just swap it out. More problematic for me is that it has 2850 RPM. During my research for this project, I looked at a lot of small mills and drill presses. I found that they typically have motors with 500 to 750 watts and around 1500 rpm. The spindle speeds of the commercial machines were between 100 to 2000 rpm. Obviously I need to get my spindle speeds within the same range. Here is what I came up with. On the left we have the pulley for the motor, in the middle the tensioning pulley and on the right the spindle pulley. Between the motor pulley and the tensioning pulley you can change between a high setting marked as gear 2 and a low setting marked as gear 1. For clarification the I indicates the ratio between the pulley diameters. The ratio translates directly to the RPMs as well. In the low gear the tensioning pulley turns with 770 RPM and when the high gear is engaged with 2035 RPM. That's about all you can do there. Now between the tensioning pulley and the spindle pulley you can select the spindle speeds. First step on the cone pulleys, there are always two spindle speeds available. Which one gets used depends on whether the high or the low gear is engaged. If you take a look at this table, you can see all spindle speeds this mill is capable of. Once I had my drive train laid out, I drew the pulleys in CAD. To save some material, I hollowed them out like you would see on cast iron pulleys and added these support structures. Now it was time for printing. By the way, as belt profile I used the Z10 profile, just because my lathe uses the same one. After removing the support material, I was really happy with how they turned out. And I was very curious to see them in action, so I just had to hook one of them up on the lathe. Let's talk a bit about some of the flaws of 3D printed pulleys. The main weakness of them is on their bore diameter. Normal pulleys would use keys or grub screws to deliver torque and hold on to the shaft. If you would implement such features directly into the print, the lifespan of the pulleys would be rather short. So I came up with an idea. Just like on threaded inserts, you could make a metal insert bushing for the actual pulley shaft connection as well. I quickly started my lathe and machined one. In order to give the molten plastic a grippier contact area, some about 1mm deep grooves around the outer shell had been cut with an angle grinder. I proceeded by stacking everything up on the drill press table and using the drill press as, well, a press. For heating, a regular torch is the perfect tool. As you can see, that actually works quite good. But there is one flaw that can be seen when the mill is under power. The pulleys are not perfectly on the shaft axis, that's why they wobble a bit. Some kind of jig would give better results for sure. But considering that these pulleys are prototypes, they are good enough for now. After all pulleys were finished, the next step was to build a tensioning system. My take on that was to use the pulley in the middle for tensioning by making it movable. For that I built these two risers. After laying them out, they went straight on the lathe for boring.
Next up I ground them into final shape. Then I decided to do a facing cut on the lathe again. After that I drilled and threaded the holes to lock the rises onto the arm of the mill. The next workpiece was this piece of flat steel. Not much to see here. I just cut it down to length with an angle grinder and drilled the four mounting holes. Then I welded this short shaft in the middle, which is used as the pivot point for my tensioning system. Now to a more interesting thing, the tensioning mechanism. It is basically just a threaded rod held captive in the main body which is made of rectangular pipe and a moving part made of flat steel. I started by cutting the moving part out of a big piece of flat steel. After bringing the part into shape, I drilled a series of holes and filed the remains away until I was left with enough clearance to fit the threaded rod. In the back is just a thread M12 hole. Oh boy, I'm going to be so happy when I can do stuff like that on the mill. Next up I started to make the shaft and bearing housing. Here is a detail. Nothing special really. The bearings are your regular skateboard bearings, assembled in a floating bearing arrangement. Let's assemble it. At first I mount the shaft onto the moving part using some Loctite and water pump pliers. By the way the right way to do that would be to add two flat spots so you can tighten the shaft with a wrench. Then I added the bearing assembly. The bearings are secured in place by this clamping ring. Also, here I realized that I'm not able to tighten the grub screw on the clamping ring down all the way. For this, I added a notch later. As the next step, the threaded rod and the moving part were added along with the hand wheel. To finish assembling, I put the mechanism onto the shaft and also secured it with a clamping ring. To complete the belt drive, we also need a motor mount. For that, I grabbed a piece of flat steel. I then bent it into a piece of pipe with an inner diameter of 60mm which fits perfectly over the mill's arm. Then I cut a small piece of lead steel to size again and weld it onto the piece of pipe I just made. 
Later I drilled and threaded two holes through this part. There will be two grub screws to mount the motor assembly onto the mill's arm later on. After that I just welded the steel plate onto the piece of pipe. This plate has two holes in it where the motor will be mounted. Speaking of the motor, as you can see the motor has a very short shaft with an M8 thread. I extended it by cutting a thread into a small piece of shaft I had laying around. I then just secured it with some blue Loctite. After a test fit of all involved components, the belt drive is more or less finished now. Here is some footage of the rolling cart build. Not much playing went into this one, I just made it up as I went along. I started by cutting some square pipe I had laying around from another project to size and welded two identical frames out of them. These were then also welded together until I got a box. On one side two pieces of flat iron were added. They serve as the mounting point for the rubber feet later. On the other side of the box I also added two big pieces of flat steel which serve as the tabletop. This card has one special feature. The wheels it stands on can be retracted. This gives you the advantage of rigidity while being also flexible with space because space is a premium in every workshop. Also you can see on this picture the rubber feet I was talking about earlier. The next thing to do was to mount the mill onto the cart. For that I laid out a hole pattern onto the base plate and started drilling through the base plate and the tabletop. After test fitting it was time to paint both parts. It always amazes me what a difference a nice coat of paint makes. And just like that we are able to assemble everything we have so far. At this point I was very excited. I started by lifting the body of the mill onto the table and putting in all the bolts. By the way those are 10 pieces of M12 bolts. After adding the two bushing covers and the whole spindle assembly, I started to mount the tensioning system. Some copper paste was applied onto the pivot point and the thread rod as lubricant. But ceramic paste or regular grease would have worked just fine. The next things to mount were the motor plate and the motor. I just used a level to roughly dial in the plate. The only parts missing now were the pulleys. 
After the first test run I made sure to align them properly, however in the moment of filming this video they were off by a bit. Anyway, here you can see the belt drive in action. That's it for part 3. Part 4 will be focused on the Z axis and the table. Thanks a lot for watching and for all the likes and comments on my other milling videos.